Hello guys, how are you doing? I'm going to record this video to help you work in your hands-on homework. And once again, I don't want you to do exactly what I do. Just follow my methodology or my procedure, unless you have something better. And but don't copy the same distances, the same measurement, the same everything. Usually this type of problem uh, consists of finding several forces in different locations, combining them, and finding the resultant force. But not only the resultant force, the problem usually asks you for first find the equivalent force and couple moment uh, to convert this into only one force and one moment, equivalent system. And the second part is finding the location of the equivalent single force. So in this case, you have to find only one resultant force and place that force somewhere here, as I did in the classroom, to produce the same effect of everything else. This is a very important concept because it allows you to find the center of pressure, for example, the center of load also, and it's used uh, later on also to find things like the center of gravity, applying the same concept that we are doing now. For this problem, uh, I want you to work with different weights I want you to use at least three different weights, four loads, at least three different weights. I'm going to tell you what I mean by that. For example, I'm using these weights uh, because I had them. This is 1,000, 200, 500, uh, and 200 grams. And these are different weights. So I'm going to create my problem, basically, as if I know the weights, instead of being those big forces in Newtons, I'm going to work with these small forces here and instead of using big dimensions like 20 feet by 20 feet or I don't know 15 meters also by 10 meters and things like that I'm gonna work in a smaller scale because I created a board I have a small board uh, to simulate that project but I didn't create it actually Josh from the innovation lab my friend did it uh, but this is basically the board that I'm going to use you can use any type of board for doing this how are you going to work with this hands-on homework? Let me show you. First thing first. The first thing that you have to do is uh, create your problem based on whatever dimensions you have and whatever weight you have. So I'm going to use this. Okay, this thing is not working. There you go. So let me use the other one. And my board, I created the board for this experiment and I made it 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters, much better ink. Uh, let me just mark this again. And in this board, I'm going to place my weights. Uh, I'm going to use this convention. This is X, this is Y, and this is Z. And I'm going to put my forces, my weights here. I'm going to put a 200 gram force. I know gram is not force, don't kill me. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to work like that. And I'm going to put the 500 gram weight here or mass here and the 1000 gram here. And then I'm going to put another 200 gram force here in this one. And what are those points? Well, those points are going to be, I don't know, this is 30 by 30. I'm going to put this at, let's say, 6 centimeters from here and 7 centimeters from here and 6 and 3. I'm going to make this 4 centimeters and 4 centimeters. And I'm going to measure this, let's say, 11 centimeters, and from here, 8 centimeters. And then I'm going to ask the same question. Find the equivalent resultant force and uh, the uh, force and moment at, I'm going to say this is the origin, the point A. And then also uh, find the forget about all those forces and put only one resultant force somewhere that produces the same effect as all of them combined. So how do we do that? The first thing that you are going to do before you forget, because you are going to forget, and I know you're going to forget, uh, if you have your board, any type of board, you need also, this is going to be a force applied here. And it's not going to change, look, look what I'm saying, it's probably not, no, it's going to change. So you need to incorporate that value. So you have this board, 
and if the board is re rectangular or square, where is the total weight of this that you can consider is acting? It's going to be acting at the center of that board. That's going to be the location. So I'm going to put another force here at the center. And if this is 30 by 30, the coordinates for this are going to be 15 and 15 centimeters for this one. But the force is going to be the weight of this in grams. So you need to get a scale, like for example, this scale that I have here. Um, you can find any scale any basically anywhere. I mean, you can go, even if you don't have any at home, it's okay. Go to the grocery store and wait it. Or come to the innovation lab and wait it over there. One of the things is that when you're trying to get this way and you put it here, you're not going to be able to read the dial. So, so you can use a different approach. You can use something like this, for example. Put it here and you say, oh, the weight of this thing is 18 grams, like you can see there. And then you can put this on top of that. And when you put this on top of that and you weight it there, then you can calculate the total weight. And then you say, well, it's 18 grams. Now you have 320. I'm not going to show it to you because this is going to fall. But this is one of the ways that you can do it and subtract. Or you can just zero it right there. You zero it. And then everything that I put here is already discounting that weight. And it's going to be only that, like that. And this is going to be 302 grams. Bottom line of the story, the weight of this is 302 grams. Not the weight, the mass. And I'm going to include that also as a part of my problem because it is part of the problem, that's why. So 302 grams. If you don't include this, then your results are going to be wrong from the beginning. Now, what is this, the next thing that we have to do? Calculate the resultant force. Resultant force, FR. Now, if we want to calculate the resultant force, common sense dictate that these are masses and I have to convert all of those in forces. But this is common sense. Common sense is good. But think about it because maybe it's not common sense. Maybe maybe something that you're pre-programmed to do. I'm going to do, instead of finding the, the, the resultant force, I'm going to find the resultant mass, the resultant mass of all of this. And what is going to be the resultant mass of all of this? It's going to be the sum of all the mass. 200 plus 500 plus 1000 plus 200 plus 302 so the resultant mass of all of these is going to be 15 19 hundred 2202 grams or 2.202 kilograms same thing because you know that one gram is a thousand, uh, a thousand grams is one kilogram, so I can divide this by a thousand and I get in kilograms. So that's the resultant mass. And what do I do with the resultant mass? Well, if I have kilograms and I know that I, I can convert that into force, now I can say the magnitude of the resultant force is going to be 2.202 kilograms and I multiply that by 9.81 uh, meter per square second and then I have kilogram meter per square second so the magnitude of the resultant force is going to be calculator I don't have a calculator with me but don't worry I have my phone with me and this is a very cool app by the way look at that so this is going to be 2.202 times 9.81 this is going to be 21.6 Newton. That's the resultant force in magnitude. Because we're working in 3D, I like you to do a Cartesian, so the resultant force as a vector. Forget about this, resultant force as a vector. Oh my god, ah, keep going with those magnitudes. Resultant force as a vector. The resultant force as a vector is what? These forces are acting entering like that, so acting downward. So it's going to be negative 21.6 K Newton. That's going to be the resultant force uh, here. Resultant force. Okay. Usually people put that little cross over there to indicate the direction of the force because uh, when the force is coming in, uh, this comes from very old things. Uh, Imagine if an arrow like that, that is being shot at something. The arrow is something like that. Um, and here you have the tip. 
So because the forces are represented as arrows, so if you put the arrow, this part of the arrow is going to look like a cross, and the, if I the, the 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 load is coming up, you only represent like a dot. But don't worry, you're not going to have any problem with that because the always we are working with the problems like in 3D, and you can see perfectly the direction of the forces. So this is the problem that I want you to solve, applying the same concept, and this is what we are doing. Now, this is the part of the question. Yes, that is part of question one. You see, find the equivalent force, done. Now we have to find this other part, which is the coupled moment at the origin, in this case, point A. How do you find the coupled moment at the origin? I'm not going to transform the grams into forces. If you want to do it, do it. I'm going to go work everything in grams and centimeters, and at the end, I will transform the result. But I'm not going to transform these, 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 and all the distances. I'm wasting time if I do that. So I'm going to do here summation of moments. Uh, and uh, I know it's a summation of R cross Fs. I know I'm not going to use moments and I'm calling it moment, but please follow with me. I mean, do what I'm telling you and at the end you're going to see the outcome. Instead of using the forces and you're going to use the masses, instead of using the R's in meters, I'm going to use them in centimeters. And at the end I just do one general conversion and I simplify my work. So let's just start doing that. First, R cross F. For this, the force produced by these 200 grams, my R is going to be this and that. Now, if you look at this axis, this is going to be X, this is going to be Y, and the vertical is going to be in Z. So my R for this force here is going to be what? It's going to be 7I, 6J, 7I plus 6J, cross multiplied by, I know it's a force, but I'm using mass again, and it's going in the negative direction, so I'm going to consider that neg negative 200K. Okay, that one done. Now let's keep going. Let's go to this one. If I use this 500 here, then this is going to be the x direction. If this is 6 and this is 30, this is 24 and this is 3. So basically it's going to be 24i plus 3j cross multiply by that, negative 500k. And let's keep going here. Now I'm going to this 1000 that I have here. If this is a 8, so it's going to be 8i plus this distance from here to here, this distance, if this is 30, and this is 11, so this is going to be 19, 19j cross multiplied by negative 1000k, and then I'm going to do this 200 here plus, this is 4 and 4, if this is 30, this is going to be 26 and 26, so it's going to be 26i plus 26j cross multiplied by negative 200k. And don't forget this one. The location is 15i, 15k, because uh, j, because I told you uh, it's going to be at the center of the plate. If it's rectangular, if it's a triangular plate, remember you have to put it at the center. But in this case, it's 15, 15 is a square. 15i plus 15i plus 15j cross multiply by that which is negative 302k. Now once you have that we can work everything out. Now remember the little circle that I explained you? I'm gonna put it here so you put i, j, k and everything that goes in this direction i, j or j, k uh, or k, i is positive and everything that goes in the other direction is negative. So if you're going to do this multiplication you say i cross k. Okay, i cross k goes negative. It's going to be negative j, but I have this negative here so it's going to be positive j. See, 7 times 200 is 1400j. Positive. Now j cross k. j cross k is positive i, but I have that negative sign there. Negative 1200i plus 24 times times 500 is 12,000. 12,000 uh, J minus 3 times 1500 I. 
and then eight times eight thousand is eight thousand eight thousand uh, j and nineteen thousand i twenty six times two hundred is fifty two hundred in fifty two hundred so it's going to be plus fifty two hundred j minus 5200i and then this one is 15 times 302 calculator uh, no no calculator 15 times 300 is 4500 and 15 times 2 is 30 so 4530 so it's going to be plus 4530j uh, minus 4530i now we have to combine all of these. I always advise you to do something like this. For example, if you start, I know everything is positive, so I'm not gonna worry about the negative signs here, but you should worry about that, because independent. What you're doing, so this is I, this is I, this is I, this is I, and this is I. Let me add that in the calculator. Calculator. People say, people say, and don't do that, I see, I say calculator, okay, calculator, okay, done. So that value is going to be negative 31,430i and plus 31,130j. Now, look at this number. That number is just a number. It's a vector, but the units that we're working, everything is in grams times centimeters. Now, I'm gonna use another piece of paper for this, but if you have 31, 30, 31,000, 31,430 I plus 31,130J, and this is in grams per centimeters, by the way, Pay attention. Grams is this. This is grain, not grams. Grain is a different uh, unit of mass. And I think 15 grams about that is kind of what one gram is, or a uh, one grain is like a point zero six something grams but it's not the same thing the gram grain came because it's the, the size of the uh, ideal the mass of the ideal cereal uh, cereal uh, grain that's what it is so i'm going to check because now my ocd is going to kill me so I'm going to check here what a grain is. Let me see, Google grain. I'm not gonna show you my desktop because you're gonna, take your exam is there by the way. So a grain is a unit of, and, and by the way, I'm checking at the most reliable source, which is Wikipedia. Uh, it says 64 milligrams. So that's what I told you, 64.8 milligrams, so yes. And yes, it is nominally based upon the mass of a single virtual idea seed of a Syria. So I remember, I remember what I'm reading. I remember what I read, no, I remember <laughs> what I learned. I'm reading it now. So we have to convert these into what? Into the coherent units for moment in the SI system, which are what? We have to convert that into Newton meter and we have gram centimeter. Well, then first I convert the grams into kilograms because remember a newton is a kilogram meter per square second so i have to convert the grams into kilograms grams into kilograms and that's what i'm going to do by saying that one kilogram is the same thing as a thousand grams and this and this cancel out and now i have it in kilograms and then these centimeters i need to convert it in meters and i'm going to do the same thing by saying that one meter is 100 centimeters the key is that this have to cancel out and that's how you do it and then i multiply this by 9.81 9.81 9.81 9.81 9.81 9.81 9.81 9.81 9.81 9.81 9.81 9.81 9.81 9.81 9.81 9.81 9.81 9.81 9.81 9.81 9.81
which is going to be in meters per square second and that's going to give me the other part of the newton so i have kilogram meter square second times meter when i do that my values are going to be or not to be that is the question uh, 31,430 divided by 10,000 100,000 multiplied by 9.81 3.08 3 that's going to be my value 3.08 where are you, where are you, where are you where are you, where are you I missed something here. Yes, 3.083. 3.083. 3.083i minus, it's almost the same value. So basically, let me see, 31, 130 times 9.81 divided by 100,000. And it's going to be 3.06 or 3.054, 3.054 J. And now this is our moment. This is our resultant moment. And the units of this resultant moment are already in Newton meters. So first part, resultant moment at A, and is this, and the resultant force was, 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 was. Where are your resultant force? Here, uh, 21.6 Newton meter. Negative 21.6 Newton no meters in the direction K, Newtons. That is this. In other words, I can take all those forces out and at this point, put only that force, the resultant force acting downward, like that, I can get that plate and do this. Plate, 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 and then I put there one force of 21.6 Newton at that point, but I have to put the other moment, and the other moment is going in the direction uh, I negative J, so basically if this was X and this was Y, it's gonna be some something it's gonna be like a moment in this direction somewhere like that rotating going like that in that direction like that in that way with that value 3.083 i minus 3.054 j moment in that direction newton meter this and that will behave the same externally externally for the sake of calculating reactions and external equilibrium Okay, first part done. Now let's go with the second part. The second part is telling, you know something? I don't want that. I don't want apply a moment there. I want to move this force somewhere in this plate, somewhere, but only that force. I'm going to put the force somewhere there, somewhere. My resultant force is going to be there. And this moment, I don't want to apply it as a moment, but I want that by placing the force here in this location, which is unknown for me, Actually, that is a question, my location x, y, here, is going to produce that moment. That's basically it. So we have almost done solved the problem at this point. What do we do? We get this and say, I'm going to put it here again. So I'm going to do this. This is my problem. And the second part of the problem is this. I want to put my resultant force here where located at x and y from that from that uh, point a and then the moment produce of this the, this force is going to produce with respect to this point which is just xi plus yj cross multiplied by that resultant force of negative 21.6k has to be equal to that moment, which was the moment generated by all of the individual forces at the point A. And that moment is 3.083i minus 3.054j. That's what we are going to do. Now we just solve this and you say i cross k. How much is i cross k? i cross k is j. i cross k, i cross k, where's my circle? 
I cross K. I cross K is J. What is this? Uh, this was the value for the moment? I don't remember that was the value for the moment. No, that was positive, and this was negative. I uh, just to see if you were paying attention. Okay, so I cross K is going to be negative times negative is going to be positive. So this is going to be negative and this is going to be positive from here. Okay, so then I'm going to have 21.6x. That's what I have, 21.6x. 21.6xj uh, 21.6xj x times 21.6j and then this times this is going to be one y times k is going to be a uh, i i times k is going to be what am i doing here this is j okay j i'm tired j cross k is going to be i and that i is going to be negative no negative because of this negative so yes negative 21.6 y i and this is going to be equal to negative 3.083 i plus 3.054 j so in order for these two things to be equal then i has to be equal to i that's the first and j has to be equal to j in other words, 21.6x has to be equal to 3.054 and negative 21.6y has to be equal to negative 3.083. From here, you can solve x, you can solve y, and x is equal to, to 3.054 divided by 21.6, that's 0. 0 0.141 meters meters and 3.083 divided by 21.6 that is going to be equal to 0 0.143 meters almost the same value so I'm going to express xy xy in centimeters so multiply by 100 this is going to be 14.1 meters in x and 14.3 meters in y now this is just the analytical part with the experimental ways that you have now what i want you to complete this problem with is this now you're going to go with the funny part the, the fun part of this now you're going to get the board whatever board you have and i'm going to measure remember i'm saying this is x and this is y let me see what are my measurements here from the four, seven, six. So I'm going to say uh, I'm going to say this. This is the x-axis in this direction, in this direction, and this is the y-axis. I'm going to go to the back here of the board. Remember, this is the x-axis. This is the x-axis here. This is the x-axis here. So I'm going to measure. You know something? I'm gonna move this camera somewhere. I'm getting dizzy. Earthquake. That guy is moving all the time. I don't like his videos. I don't care. Okay, yeah. Kind of. You can see something from there. Kind of. You can see what is the meaning of doing this. So I'm going to get. Now you have the top view and then you have the side view from here from the camera. It's too close. I don't like it that much. Eee, stop moving the camera once. This guy, oh my god, he thinks that I don't have anything else to do in this entire world that see this. Okay. Better? I think so. I don't know. If it's not better, I'm sorry. I can see it. So, the x direction, once again, x direction, yes, this is the x direction. So, I'm going to measure here in this direction. This is my x direction. I'm going to measure my numbers. What are my numbers? 14.1. So 14.1 in this direction. I get this. 14.1 in this direction. I need a pen. 14.1 in this direction. 14.1. This is my x coordinate. 14.1. 14.1 in this direction. 
and in the y direction I have 14.3 so 14.3 is in this direction 14.3 14.3 14.3 now wherever these two coordinates intersect that should be the resultant for the component for the total force for the resultant force the location of the resultant force now if you go directly from here to there it's going to be a problem you use a straight edge or something i don't have the straight edge with me but i have a book and i can use that book for doing that i can put this book here uh let me put the book i'm going to use the book just to mark this line here and you make this line to coincide this part of the book i know i should have a straight edge i know you put it here and then you mark a line and then you go in the other direction and you do the same thing just be sure that your probe is correct and then that is the point where the resultant force should be acting and how do we know if that is a point well then you're going to put some tape you don't have to I put some tape here because it's gonna help me put a point I'm gonna put that point over there but I'm not gonna glue it I'm just gonna put it there okay right there and now and now I'm gonna move the camera again I'm sorry guys not really Cable. I need more cable. I need the cameraman. Please help me with these videos. Okay, now I have that thing over there. What is the objective of this? I'm going, if the point was calculated correctly, what I have to do is point exactly at that point the weights. This is uh, the first weight was, the first weight was uh, 200 was here right so seven centimeters and six centimeters so if you measure I already pre-marked them here but if you measure in I which is this direction seven centimeters and in J is gonna be six centimeters each one of these lines is a centimeter so I'm going to put the 200 mass here ideally you have to do a point you have to use a point to do that but because this is symmetric and this is also a review for for distributed loading the concentrated load coming from this distributed loading is going to be at the centroid of that mass and the centroid the center of mass is exactly at the center of that thing so this was the 200 and then i have the 500 which it should be placed here 500 because it was six centimeters from this edge and three centimeters from the other edge this is one two three and six in the other direction and now my the other image is on top of this but you understand what i'm doing and um, by the way i'm applying a lot of force here because this is a moment generated in that way and if you realize this finger and this finger now are producing a couple this finger is pushing it up this finger is pushing it down to counter for that moment you see that that also works for explaining couple moment now this moment is gonna change a little bit now and it's gonna be better for me as soon as i do this and i'm gonna put the 1000 mass here which was 11 centimeters from the base and eight centimeters from the side meaning the location is gonna be this uh kind of one two three four five six seven eight and eleven and then i had the last one which was four and four in this corner and it was located right there now let me show you and you have to be really careful when you do this because everything may fall i'm sorry i'm gonna take you in a plane trip <laughs> let me you know something I'm going to uh, hello how are you I'm still here I'm gonna change this and I'm gonna put just the webcam webcam there you go handsome guy so you see here this is the project that we were doing and the oh, oh 
yes right I can't find the correct angle I have to update my equipment okay there you go there you go this is the plate 1000 500 200 200 and the corresponding locations and this is not only the important part the important part now is that if you go under you're gonna see that everything is everything was <laughs> you know that happened because but you were witnesses okay i did it you witnessed the ex success of the experiment <laughs> uh, uh, everything was balanced at that point everything was balanced at that point and i push it here with my stomach and everything went you know i'm not gonna tell you where it went but actually it fell in my foot uh, now that's a successful experiment and it's a blooper that I'm not gonna erase from the from the video. But if you don't get the same value for any reason, let's say that uh, when you try to do the balance at that point, don't cheat. You might have some errors in calculations, you might have some errors that you did in, in, in approximations, uh, you might have some uh, maybe not very accurate distances you might have some maybe the ways that you calculated were not that correct try to always assume your error if you want to fix it fix it real I mean for real do another experiment but uh, but if you can't you know things happen actually the saying say something happens but it's different but no no not not things happen they say other thing but Explain your errors. Reason why do you have that thing? Why that discrepancy is there? Calculate the percentage of error and discuss your results. That is also very important, and that's what a good researcher will do. Uh, well, I hope that you enjoy it. I really enjoy it until it fell on top of me. But uh, don't do the same thing that I did regarding the same weights in the same positions. If you want to use those weights, there's a bunch of them in, in the innovation lab that you can use and remember the report professional report presentation discuss your results and also the video that's all that i'm expecting from you so until the next video see you guys make me proud please and make yourself proud also bye have a good day